how I wish that these elections will get our own Obi, our own somebody Obi, who will create a third force for us so that the Diopoli doesn't take us for granted in the manner they continue to do. Yes, Dr. Shubo Koku, thank you once again. Now, um, the, the, the question that I want you first to deal with has to do with the fact that six months ago on this show, you were so damn sure that this 2.5 million mop-up, the NIA would have covered it before the end of 2022. Here we are in March. Of course, now money has been released. They didn't have money. What, what, do, do you think you have sufficient assurance that all those who must get on the card will get on it and get their cards? And remember that we are using 2020 population census in all of this discussion. 2020, and we are in 2023. Uh, so, and a lot of things may have changed. And the population census, though a good measure, sometimes is not exact. Uh, something, good money, and my regards to Suleiman. Right. Tell, tell, tell him that he, I will arrest him after the program because he has not been looking for me. <laughs> <laughs> something. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that your presenters are all talking about twin register, twin register, twin register. So it means that they are in line with us. Let us also understand that the Electoral Commission has been given a mandate by our constitution. And I stand up for those who drafted the constitution as far as Electoral Commission's activities are concerned. And if they give the commission an assignment to do, then they give the commission all the powers that they need to implement them. So that if at the end of the day, something goes wrong, they can now accuse the electoral commission that they did not take the right steps. And if you wouldn't mind, I, I, I want to take you through history. I joined the commission in 1995. In 1995, I came to meet the uh, CI-12, which was passed in 92, this was 95. And it enlisted a lot of identities, plus the guarantees. And this was CI prepared by the Electoral Commission at that time, depending on the variable identities and cards and the rest. Then in 20... 2004, we came out another one. In 2016, we went biometric. That's why we deleted the health insurance because of the judgment. Then in 2020, we amended the CI-91. So we have used CI-12, CI-72, CI-91, CI 126 and CI with a name to be given. And in all these things, steps are being taken to improve the sanctity of our register. So now, when we are going to compile the 2020 registration using the CI 91, we amended the proof of legibility portion and removed all the other things and we were left with the Ghana card, passport, and guarantor system. Now, we believe that that helped us to reduce the level of infractions on the register. When you write an exam and you get a B, and you have a potential of getting a B plus or an A, you sit down, you do evaluation, they say, how bad do we get there? As I speak to you, something media people, you can always investigate. You can contact immigration service. Every day they are bringing us one or two names of people who are foreigners and who went through our system. They will arrest them and bring their cards and bring it. So we, we read that 
the 2020 result was far improvement upon the previous ones. But still, it does not mean that there were no infractions. So we read that all those who went through, if you, they are arrested, they are investigated, they went through the guarantee system. There are a lot of young ones, we have to spend a number of days to clean the register of the minors. And almost all of them, they went through the guarantee system. So we said that if the guarantee has become an albatross on us, then why don't we come out with another way of improving on it? Because we read that the, with the Ghana card, going through the process of getting it, the abuse will, I'm not saying it will be zero, but the abuse will be reduced drastically. They said, okay, going forward, we have spent money, resources, and time to clean the current one. Then let us not go through the same process and create the problem again. So now, let us make room for a, a, a new law that will help reduce the level of the infractions. Then let us introduce the Ghana card. Fortunately, Article 51 gives us the mandate. So we will only plead with everybody, help us to implement the law and clean the system such a way that we will not be thinking of international register. Berganes voters register. So that's my preamble. Now, something I'm listening, I'm, I'm not ready for the questions. Right. So, my first question Six months ago, you were sure, setting, that the 2.5 million people will be mopped up by end of year. That was the assurance you got from the NIA. Right. Um, and I say that. We are working with figures on the population and housing census of 2021. So yes. it's likely that even that number of people who are qualified you know, to go on the Ghana card and who would have qualified uh, to also get um, registered as voters would have increased. Now, yes. how sure are you that NIA can deliver all the numbers left uncovered so that you will also, you know, uh, register those who are 18 and above. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. If you have followed the NIA presentations, you will realize that including 15 years upwards, they have about 2.5 people to cover. Now, they were held up with the release of the Ghana card, and that was about 3.5. So they needed money to get these cards, and once they get them, they are saying that within two months, they will cover everybody. Now, from NIA, they have been given at least 100 million Ghana series, and with that amount, the held up cards, the 3.5 will be released to them. Now, if this happens, then they will cover the 3.5, which they are yet to cover, including 15 years, 16 years, 17 years. So yeah, we, I have, and the commission has no, no doubt to believe that once the NIA has been met in terms of their requirements, the uh, professor has said it over and over that they have the capacity and the capability to do the work once they have the resources. Now the resources have been given, so we are hoping that they will meet them. Mm -hmm. Let us also bear in mind that the 2.5 that we are talking about is start from 15 years uh, upwards. The electoral commission's calculation based on the statistics available, we are only adding 2 million to the 17 million that we have. And these 2 million will be added from now to October uh, 2024. So it means that NIA has 20 months, and Electoral Commission too has 20 months to cover these people. So now that the NIA has access to their cards, I don't think this one should be a problem. So mm -hmm. what the NIA should rather help everybody is to engage the government so that all the resources that are needed at any point in time will be given. As far as the Electoral Commission is concerned, 
we don't have any problem because we are using our permanent staff. So we are not going to hire people to pay them. So mm. we don't need any budget for us to rule out the control organization and to capture the people. Right. The they, they, and once they have been given the resources, okay. they should be able to do that. Right. Um, we, we will definitely see how that goes because the, the government owes in about uh, 100 and is it 17 million dollars right it was about 117 million dollars uh if it has paid 100 million ghana cities uh now uh which is just uh one point uh is it 1.4 um you know uh, it it means it it means that there's a uh, is it 1.36 billion that is left to be paid how the government deals with that debt we'll see how that goes but here is the question you say the main reason you want to do this is to avoid your guarantor system which you say is porous and allows miners and foreigners you know to participate and bloat the register so that unlawful, un unqualified people are voting. You're right. The question that's been asked is, what's the difference really? Because people are also going to get the NIA card using a guarantor system. Yes, but at least it increases the chain of abuse. It reduces, it increases the chain of being able to abuse. Because if people are saying that NIE is, is using guarantor system and they can go there, so then the, the problem is addressed. Go to your guarantor system with the NIE. Now, but let us bear in mind that with the NIE, you, you are guaranteed, but you swear an oath before a commission of oath. In addition, the guarantor's bio data, bio data are attached to your name. So at any point in time, they can identify you what you are guarantors, which is different from that of the electoral commission. Mm. So if the guarantor system is available to the NIA, let the people who use the guarantor system get their Ghana card and they will use the Ghana card to come and register. Okay. So it doesn't or in, in this. Do do I take it that you are you are you are now abandoning your earlier arguments that the NIA system is where people can be punished if they falsely guarantee and in your guarantor system. What I said. No I'm, I'm, that. no, I'm saying that for a long time now, what the EC has told us is that with the NIA guarantor system, because you swear an oath before a commissioner for oath, you suffer consequences. But the fact is that when you swear, when you do the guarantor system through the EC, you also suffer consequences. It's just that perhaps you may not have been activating yours to punish those who use your guarantor system. So the, 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 the next question, which but is but the concern? No, let me address that one. Yes, what please. What I said is that with the NIA, you swear before a commission of oath. So it puts a form of fear before the applicant. In addition, the bio biometrics of the guarantors mm. are attached to the one who has that's, the that's, that's understood. The biometrics that, that is attached makes the difference and not the yes. consequences because in your but own law in your own law before, you in your own law you also swear and say that you bear the the, the consequences that follow from uh, false swearing even though you are swearing before an EC person now uh, something yes if I'm swearing before an ordinary person the fear is not the same as swearing before a, a notary public a commissioner of oath so oh, these are people who are doing that now you are going to swear and look before the commission of oath, that one put some fear in the... In the okay. So I, 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 I hear that, but from where I sit, I don't see what that, dif that, that difference that makes. Uh, if you swear falsely, once you are swearing an oath, and the law provides for that oath to be sworn, you must suffer the consequences, whether you are swearing it before a court or you are swearing it before an ordinary person. I agree to that. Right. But then that for the applicant, mm. the mere fact that they are swearing before a commission of oath tends to intimidate them. Okay. Okay. Now, the, the, again, you have stress that 
This is to help you do a continuous registration system. The question that is being asked is that you have a law that allows you to do continuous registration. You have never used it. So what is the guarantee that now you use a new law that is passed to allow you to do the same thing that you already have power to do? Okay. Now, if you look at the law, if you compare the two, you read that this one, the focus is on continuous registration. Unlike the previous one where you have other forms of registration, this one, the focus is on the continuous registration. In addition to that, this one helps in the sense that if you, we are going to roll out the continuous registration and we are doing registration specifically at the district offices, unless there's an uh, exigency for us to go outside it. Now, the, the, whenever you are doing registration, the parties are there. If you have the guarantors, then the parties will be there always because they want to be there to guarantee and also to ensure that the right people apply. Now, if you are using only the Ghana card, then the party will get to know that I don't need to be there because there's a reliable form of identification. So going through the condensation with the Ghana card makes it easier for even the political parties it to cut down their cost in the sense that initially they will want to observe but they will get the point there that once you come, you don't need to be there to guarantee for anybody. You don't need to be there to be challenging people because people will be coming there with comparatively reliable form of identity. Mm. Then I perhaps maybe I ask you this lastly and come to the studio. How do you solve the problem of long distances to the registration centers that you are now going to uh, use and the possibility of confusing people as to their specific polling stations where they will, reg they will be able to vote. Um, I've heard the uh, majority say that all of those are not issues. But uh, interestingly, um, this is an issue that the MPP itself has raised before. In their written address, in the 2012 election petition, and I'm holding a copy of the address in my hand here. On page five, they raised one critical issue and they said, one disturbing decision by the Electoral Commission was the registration of voters without assigning them to any polling station. An intriguing development was the announcement, you know, it's okay. So I'll end it there. So the NPP have also had issues previously, I I but now they don't seem to have that issue. How do you solve that issue I, as well? I, one, I, I, I don't know the court judgment on the issue that you, you brought by the NPP when the 2012. I don't think the commission has ever raised people without assigning them polling stations. So I don't, I, I don't know the judgment that was given. No, this is not a but judgment. It, this was the MPP's address to the court before the judgment was delivered. And they raised the issue that one disturbing, the one disturbing decision by the Electoral Commission was the registration of voters without assigning them any polling station. And another one was that, did, did the court give a judgment on that? Because since I joined the commission, we have never registered anybody without assigning a person to a, a polling station. So I don't know where, how that one came from. Now, if you look at the current law, something, it says that the registration will be done at the district offices. In addition, the commission will uh, do registration at other places as the, as the situation demands. So clearly, we are, we are aware of that. But something, is it not interesting that these very people we are talking about, when they finish GSS, they go to secondary schools. Where they, the secondary schools are would not within their settlements. But nobody complains about that. Something, anybody in Ghana who wants to travel outside the country goes to Accra to book a flight. Nobody has a problem. Anybody who wants to have uh, other documents, they go to the district capital to do that. There's no problem. But when it comes to electoral commission, then this time becomes a problem. Mm. But still, we know that me, I'm a village board. So it is in the, in the law that in addition to the district offices, electoral commission will do registration at other places, depending on the situation. So what our intention is that 
if you are an opinion leader, if you are an MP, if you are an assembly man, whoever you are, there's, there's a distance between your community and that. You mm. gather your people. All right. Give us the information mm. that in my village, we have this number of people who are 18 years, but because of this, they will not be able to travel. Mm. If you have to use one day or two days, we'll move the team, a team there to come and capture you. So that issue is not an issue. Okay, thank you. Now.